This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the very high-tech studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza. We focus on positive stories of businesses in Hawaii and their owners who have made it successful here. There's always challenges, uh, but somehow a lot of people seem to get around those challenges and are successful. We also on the show uh, invite guests to come in and talk a little bit about what they do to help support these efforts uh, in helping businesses be successful in Hawaii. And today we've got a familiar face. Uh, Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation is here. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about taxes and, and rail and tax reform and special sessions. But, but Tom, uh, he's been here many times. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Tom, I guess you've been a, a busy guy here recently. I seem to see your name popping up in different places, uh, you know, named in, in, and you're initiating some legal action against people, I guess the rail and, and some other stuff. Can you give us a quick briefing, some of the things that you're working on? Well, uh, I'll, let me, let me t talk a little bit about uh, uh, like the rail suit that you talked about. Um, we uh, brought a, uh, a court action uh, against the state of Hawaii uh, regarding you know part of the the real surcharge, and I say part because uh, you, you know how we in Honolulu have to pay the half percent. Right. Uh, it That's turns the out the GET. So the GET is four, and then we add half a percent to that to, to help pay for the rail. Right. See, everybody thinks half of that at the that half percent is going to go for go to rail. Actually, only ninety percent goes to rail. Mm -hmm. Ten percent is kept by the state, goes into general fund. Do not pass go, do not collect $100. Nobody knows where it goes, but it doesn't go to rail. Oh, so that's part of their slush fund. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of what we've been saying, and that's, that's why we think um, uh, there's a constitutional problem there. Uh, we, we, we brought suit uh, to have the courts sorted out because I think when, when, you, when you look at it, um, that part of the tax is only assessed against Honolulu residents, businesses, mm. customers, uh, and, and yet it's, it's feeding uh, $25 million a year to the state general fund. So, so something's, something's Interesting. wrong. Interesting. So that $25 million could actually be used anywhere in the state, not just on Oahu where the money came from. That's right. Interesting. It can and, and probably is. And is. Yes. So what is the status of that suit? Is, are you making any progress on it? or? Yeah, in, in the beginning of uh, last month, beginning of July, uh, we had oral argument before the Supreme Court, Supreme Court of Hawaii. Wow. And uh, you know, we were actually very thrilled that they uh, agreed to take the case. And uh, you know, the foundation's attorney and the state's attorneys presented their arguments, and, and, this, and the Supreme Court now has it under submission, and we'll, we're expecting a decision to, to pop out from them. Uh, could be any day now. Really? So this is something we might be hearing about soon. It's possible, yes. All right. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Any indications as to how they might rule on this? Um, uh, it's just speculation at this point. Well, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We are. And, yeah, we're we're, we're hoping we, that this will be done. And what are we hoping for? Um, if they did make a ruling that was considered favorable, it would, what, uh, focus those funds to just Oahu or eliminate them or... Or, or, or basically, uh, what we're asking is that uh, the illegally diverted funds be returned to the city so that they can pay for rail like we thought they were going to do in the first place. I see. So is the city kind of supporting this effort then? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, you, you have to realize that when, when the city uh, was negotiating this deal, uh, they were basically presented with, okay, do you, do you want the surcharge or don't you? And if you do, this is how much it's going to cost you. Okay. Um, so it's really not, not in the city's interest to, to repudiate the deal. But it's not the city's money. It's taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, governments don't pay taxes. People pay taxes. That's right. So that's why we um, in the foundation have, you know, as a taxpayer advocacy or watchdog group, 
uh, we, we've tried to take it uh, you know, at least to a, to a level where it can be discussed by people uh, in, the, in the court system who have the authority to make some judgments about you know, whether this is in fact constitutional uh, or not, and whether it is unfair or not. That, that, well, that we fairness is a whole other issue. <laughs> <laughs> but does this, how does this play into the special session that's coming up, if at all? I mean, we, we, if we were to be successful at this and the money all did revert back and had to be refunded because this has been going on now for quite a number of years. That's, that's correct. Um, uh, the, the special session, of course, is, uh, is slated for the end of this month. And they're supposed to figure out a way to shore up um, funding for mm -hmm. Rio uh, through some mix of uh, GE tax, maybe the transient accommodations tax because mm -hmm. that was brought up by the House, it was. and maybe real property tax because if uh, if n number one and number two doesn't work, then the city has to fend for its own devices, and what they have is the property tax. That's always their fallback. That's always their fallback, because yeah. that's that's what you know, that's basically the lever they have. Now let me let me ask a, a kind of a loaded question. But you're you're a CPA, right? Or uh, no, I'm, I'm not a CPA, but you're an attorney. I'm an attorney. Yeah. So you you've got a, an eye for numbers. I mean, you've been doing tax work for a while. Do do we know how much we need to fund this thing? I mean, we, I, we're asking for more money. We're going back to special session. We're asking for additional funding and all that. But every time we seem to think we know what the number is, it keeps changing. Is there any definitive number that you've seen that has come out that we know how much we need? No, and as a matter of fact, I think the same question was put to the, uh, the Hart CFO. Mm. And, and he said, I don't know. I mean, if, if the Hart CFO doesn't know, I mean, how can, how can somebody like me know? Yeah, no, that's uh, disconcerting a little bit. Um, and so we're, we're asking for additional funding, possibly more taxes, maybe taxes in different areas, but we're not quite sure how much we, we really need. Yeah, no, uh, certainly they have, uh, you know, plans and estimates, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but, but I think what they found is that when they went out to bid and the bids came back, uh, the bids were higher than what they were, uh, what they were, hoping for. Well, and some of the estimates that they have come and, and offered to the public in the past is all proven to be lower than what they are now. I mean, they haven't been able to hit that mark, yet, not even once yet. One, one interesting bit of information that I learned uh, was that, you know, there's a lot of power requirements, electrical requirements, uh, to run the rail, particularly at the substations that they're building. And so they went out and started doing the pilings and they started building the substations. Uh, and it was very late in that game before they even reached out to the Hawaiian Electric Company, asking them to get involved to start working out the plans on how to bring the power. And they found out that there weren't the capabilities there. And so now he goes going back trying to figure out how to cover the costs of bringing the power that they need to the stations to run the train and those state, the substations. Um, and that's all part of these additional costs because of the poor planning that was done right up front. And, and, I, and I believe also there was a, an issue that uh, ECO was saying, look, you, you, we, we need more clearance between the rails and these, these power lines than was provided for in the plans. So you got to change your plans. And, and Hart's going, what? It's amazing. Um, Anyways, there was, there was a suggestion that we do a, some people are calling it a forensic audit. I'm not sure that that's the best word uh, or description of what it is, but an efficiency audit or, or something to look at what has happened in the past, what are some of the, the balls that were dropped and, and maybe the estimates that were missed, uh, to see you know, and identify where those problems are to make sure that they don't happen again. Now. Otherwise, history tends to repeat itself. And yeah, that's, well, that's what I was going to say. Some of the people on the board um, didn't think that was necessary. They don't want to, I think one person said, muck it up. Uh, muck around in the past. Muck around in the past. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, 
that was one of the most unbelievably stupid comments I have heard in a long time from Hart. Um, what's your thoughts about that? Um, I, I, I think uh, when you have like systematic cost overruns like what we've been having, uh, you really need to understand why this is going on. And when you understand why this is going on, then, then I think you'll be in a better position to come up with a viable recovery plan. Uh, if you don't know why, you put a recovery plan together, it'll probably fail. Well, and, and it Unless fails you, because you don't know what the mistakes were made in the, in the first place. R right, or, 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 you, or there is some root cause uh, that you have not been addressing, and guess what, it pops up again, because you, cause you haven't dealt with it. So uh, what, what, what we've been saying at the Foundation and you know, some other people uh, have been doing like petition drives and so on is you know we, we, we need to have that, that that review we need to have um, somebody tell us what what happened what were the mistakes so we can learn from them and and, and figure it out now uh, I, I guess what the internal people in heart were saying was well we know what the mistakes are or and, 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 and if but if that's the case then why do they keep happening <laughs> exactly I was just going to ask that question. Yes, if, if we know what the mistakes are, how do we know with any assurance that they're not continuing to happen? I mean, we need to bring some light to this process uh, and, and some objectivity. I mean, sometimes, from my experience, if you're part of the management that created a mess in the first place, sometimes you really don't want a lot of people to see what was going on and you want to try to fix it yourself. Um, but maybe you're just not seeing it as clearly as others from the outside can see it. Yes. You know, uh, and that's one of the reasons why the SEC and a lot of other uh, federal agencies require independent third-party reviews or audits um, because they do need to be objective and not be, you know, looking at things through rose-colored glasses and put a positive spin on it. Let's just clean this up. Let's let's fix what's broken. Make sure it doesn't happen again and move forward. Yeah, and, and one, one thing that you did say uh, kind of just uh, triggered a thought in my mind. Uh, you, you mentioned the SEC. Okay. One thing that people need to realize is they've just issued bonds. Mm -hmm. right? When you issue bonds, you go to the market, SEC now has requirements. Ah. Okay. And so if you have uh, financial statements that are materially misleading, or that don't state material facts, you have you have problems. We got big problems. Matter of fact, we got to go on a short break, but let's let's come back to this right after the break because this can be significant. Uh, this is business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here today talking with Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation. Uh, we're covering a variety of talk it, uh, topics, but we we seem to be stuck on the rail right now, and so we're going to talk a little bit more right after the break about some of the issues related to the bonds that are going to be. Uh, issued by heart. So uh, we'll be right back in about one minute. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're here with Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation, and 
And we're talking uh, about the, the rail issue and some other tax issues that's uh, going to be coming up here soon. Uh, Tom, we were just getting into uh, the issuance of bonds. That, is it Hart or is it the state that's going to be issuing these bonds? Or do uh, we know? I, I think I think that'd be the city. The city. Oh, okay. The city yeah. and county is going to be issuing them uh, on behalf of, of Hart to fund the rail. Right, because uh, I think it was a city council resolution. Okay. Or. or, or or something that is now uh, once they issue the bonds and I, I I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be tens of millions of dollars of bonds being sold yes then then a, a whole different set of laws uh, can be applied to the picture namely the securities laws right uh, they, they protect uh, people who invest in the stock market and the bond market uh, and, uh, and 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 you know for the long and short of it is uh, if there is inaccurate or misleading or false information in the financials that the city or Hart is using to go out and sell those bonds, uh, then the SEC, Securities Exchange, Exchange right. Commission, can get involved, uh, do civil fines, and they put people in jail. And, and they've got a pretty big stick, you know, and they, they take their job very seriously. And I, I've been involved in the past in some public companies, and. Uh, a lot of the officers in those companies have to sign and be in compliance with different uh, elements of the, the law related to securities transactions. Um, and the, the, the compliance issues don't necessarily just evolve around, say, the financial statements. It's also the narratives that are associated with those financial statements. So if there are um, you know, components of the financial statements, whether it be an executive summary or footnote disclosures or whatever, all of that is under the purview of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah, and, and there was actu an actual case um, that just recently got concluded where there was a, uh, a city in, or a municipality in New York State uh, that had gone out and issued bonds to build a stadium. Uh, the voters didn't want it, but they wanted to go out anyway, so they did. And it turns out that uh, you know there was some cooking the books involved. Mm. And as a result of that, uh, the um, the supervisor, uh, you know, their equivalent of our you know city council uh, person, uh, got convicted on twenty felony counts. Wow. Uh, mail fraud, wire fraud. Wow. Securities, uh, securities violations. And this is an elected official that didn't really have direct responsibility for. They had other people over there that was running this as well. So he was kind of an overseer. That that's right. Wow. And uh, so he's he's going to be sentenced in September, and he's probably going to be facing time. Well, you know, some of the silliness that's been going on over there at Art, then, and maybe even at the city council, better. Uh, you know, they take need to take a look at it to make sure that they're squeaky clean once these bonds get issued. Yeah, they, they better be ta taking their uh, craft very seriously. Very good. Um, you know, they've they've got a lot to lot more to do. I guess um, you know some of the issues over there is not going to go away soon. You know, we've got this special session coming up. There's going to have to be some additional funding done. I would assume that this is going to stay high in everybody's list uh, in the news here for a while. Um, yeah, and I, I think another issue that's, that's going to stay on the news, uh, at least as it applies to like business clients, is we're, we're going to get a tax increase. And, and this is effective January 1st, 2018. Uh, remember the 9, 10, and 11% income tax rates we thought we got rid of at the end of 20, uh, 2015? Well, they're coming back. Uh, in order to fund, uh, and, and this, this is very interesting, they, they, they have three income tax credits to help the poor right. that, are, that are coming back in. One, the two of them already exist, right? And the third is, is basically um, uh, the earned income tax credit that the feds now have. We're going to be uh, supplementing that with a, a credit that's 20%. A local EIC then, yeah. earned income but, credit. Hmm. But only for five years. Okay. So, so, so the, and the interesting issue is, well, what happens after five years? Mm -hmm. Uh, do the tax rates go back to normal? No. Uh, do the um, does does the revenue requirements for the uh, for the earned income tax credit disappear? Yes, unless the you know the credit's re-extended. 
So what I'm hearing then is that they're going to be increasing the rates for the upper earners, which is going to generate some additional revenues that's going to fund the earned income credit for the lower earners, so income redistribution, but only for five years. And after five years, then they get to keep it. That's right. Unless, unless of course, something else happens. You no, know, they might increase rates more. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah, it's always, I always find it um, interesting that we always seem to try and solve our problems by spending more and taxing more. You know, and rarely do I ever see anybody paying any attention to trying to make things more efficient or more cost effective by reducing costs or increasing efficiencies. It's, it's never the expense side of the equation. It's always the revenue side that people are paying attention to. Yeah, I think the most recent example of that was the, um, uh, the privatization of the Maui hospital system. Mm. Uh, that, that, that happened, I guess, it, it just finished recently. Uh, and, and not without, uh, you know, lots of resistance and it legal... It took several years to, to work that out, right? Yeah, in, including uh, lots of lawsuits. Uh, uh, there was a bill that went through the legislature, uh, vetoed by the governor, overridden by the legislature, to, to provide a special uh, benefit to the, uh, the retiring workers, but then that was found to uh, ba basically a torpedo the tax qualification of the ERS in general. So uh, the courts enjoined it, thank God. Yeah, well, I don't know if we have time to get into the unfunded liability issues. Well, it's, it's just that we just need to know that it's out there. Yeah. It's several billion dollars, t tens of billions of dollars. And, uh, you know, it, it makes the, the, real, uh, the real situation look like chicken feed. Well, and for those uh, that may be listening that don't quite understand what that means, I mean, the unfunded liabilities are, are basically the retirement and health care costs that are accumulating every year uh, that are due to the retired or to be retired individuals um, that yes, used to we, work we, for the state. Uh, we, we promise our, our state employees that if they are on for X number of years, uh, they'll get these benefits. And our state constitution protects that and says, uh, you, you promise it to them, you can't back down from your promise. And the, the problem is that this liability continues to grow and get bigger and bigger as people continue to retire and to live longer. Uh, and we haven't really made any progress in paying down that liability. It's been growing every year, right? Um, we've, we've started paying it down uh, okay. through, through a 2013 no. law, but then, you know, people are kind of questioning the assumptions about how that unfunded liability number was calculated. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you make a, you know, to, to, to get to that number, you make a, uh, an assumption about how much rate of return the assets are going to get. Right. Okay. The, 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 you know, the current calculations are based on a 7% rate of return. Wow. Who gets 7%? I was just going to say, where are they getting that? Because I'd like to get a little bit too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and if, the, the assumption that you make about rate of return goes down. Like if, you're, if you assume it's going to uh, make 3% as opposed to 7%, then the unfunded liability jumps from like $15 billion to 35, $35 billion. So even if we did pay down a little bit of that, if the, uh, the, the income that's being projected is at 7%, but that's not real, the, the reality of it is, is we're not really making any progress in, in controlling these costs. You know, yeah, or the or the progress that we're making is way less than uh, than we want. Yeah. Well, thank goodness I'll be retiring soon, so I don't have to worry about taking care of that big liability down the road. Leave that for my grandkids, I guess. Right. Or somebody. <laughs> That's sad, but um, yeah. But we also have. I guess, um, and we touched on this earlier, but the, the special session, you said we have some different options that we can look at. One is going to be to increase or extend, uh, extend is probably the better word, the GET surtax that we have. Uh, but the other one was the TAT and then also the property tax. Now the TAT, from what I'm hearing, has got some real opposition, uh, particularly from the neighboring islands because uh, the neighbor islands don't want to have an increase in the TAT for their island 
uh, that would help go pay for the Oahu rail system. Are you hearing anything similar or different? Or yeah, and, and then and then of course uh, uh, the neighbor islands typically get a cut of the TAT as it as it now exists, and and they've been fighting for uh, you know a bigger share of of the existing TAT because they say well you know the, we we need to spend. Uh, uh, neighbor island money to take care of these tourists when they're here. So, um, we, so we ought to get more of the TET mm -hmm. to help us take care of them, um, which is an, not an, also here's an unsympathetic argument. Uh, but at at some point, you know, there's there's not enough TET money to go around. So, and that's that's what lawmakers are now struggling with. And then. And then I guess we've got the property tax is another option uh, that the city and county always seems to fall back on. And from what I understand, uses that as, as kind of like the threat that you better work with us, otherwise we're going to have to go to property tax. Um, you know, and I'm not sure how politically acceptable that's going to be. Well, the, you know, the, 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 the big issue uh, between the, the GET extension and the property tax is the, the GET extension you pay in dribs and drabs, mm -hmm. right? You know, every day on every receipt you pay a little bit. Property so it's tax not so noticeable; it kind of adds up. Right. Property tax you pay twice a year. Yeah. And 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 when when the number goes up, you yeah. notice. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a whole lot more obvious when you see it. Yeah, and then and people notice and then they scream. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the big difference. Well, you know, that'll be interesting because I'm hearing an awful lot of screaming already. So if that increases, uh, the loud, the noise is going to be pretty loud. You know, um, we've got about a minute left, Tom, and then we're going to have to wrap up. Is there uh, any final words uh, that you'd like to leave with the audience today? Uh, yes. Uh, you, uh, please, everybody, uh, uh, do keep up with, you know, what's going on in your legislature. Um, you have opportunities to go down, testify. Uh, talk with legislators. If you if you don't, um, you have to kind of deal with the, the fallout just like the rest of us do. Yeah. But at least you know if you go down there and and and, and try, you can say you tried. You know, and and making your voice heard is important. Definitely. And, and I think you know, and that's where the support for the Tax Foundation comes in because you can be a very loud voice, uh, and it's always good to have other people with you too. But if others can't participate, then at least um, you know, supporting the Tax Foundation, supporting your efforts uh, is, a, is one way of, of helping. Yes, and we, we try to be down there and we try to um, uh, educate lawmakers and others on what, it, what exactly it is that they're doing. Right. Very good. Well, thanks again, Tom. It's always good to have you on the show. It's kind of a depressing co topic a little bit, but an important one because it's something we all are going to be paying for one way or another. Yeah, and it's really helpful to understand that. It is. Uh, thank you again. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, uh, and we focus on success stories or those organizations that support businesses to be successful. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, aloha.